All right, a blessed good afternoon to everyone and we greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are so blessed and happy that you could be with us this afternoon on this wonderful Sunday evening and we hope that whatever we will have to share with you tonight, uh, you will be blessed. Uh, we have been doing uh, a series called um, Growing from Strength to Strength. And I really do hope that those of you have been on every Sunday that you would have been blessed and encouraged and motivated. It was really geared for that theme was really geared for helping believers to grow from step to step. And especially as we are in this time where we are, um, and those of you are from Trinidad and Tobago, we are in this period of, of um, what should I say, lockdown or, you know, more stay at home um, theme within our country for us, for safety purposes, we have a great opportunity to grow. We have a great opportunity to use this time to get closer to God and, um, you know, really connect with Him to ensure that our spiritual status is secure. And so this evening we want to jump into the Word and into this episode, which I will introduce shortly, but first... Let's go, um, uh, let's start our program with a word of prayer, you know. And so all of those of you who have been logging on from our local assembly at North Arapooch, I want to greet you and welcome you. For those of you who are visiting for the first time, those of you who are logging on, browsing through your Facebook pages and you're landed on this video, my name is Anton Duku and I want to say a special blessing and greeting to you. We are from the New Testament Church of God at North Orapuch and we are doing our weekly Bible study and I'm just glad to say that we are happy to have you. And before we start, I want to open in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. And Father, we ask uh, that as we delve into your word again, that you will continue to open our minds, that we'll be able to receive, we'll be able to be blessed, we will be able to be encouraged this afternoon so that we'll continue growing from strength to strength and Lord I pray whatever it is to be shared this afternoon it will not be shared from man's intellect but a divine revelation of your Holy Spirit a di divine connection with you that all oh God who are listening will be encouraged and blessed and motivated Lord in in your word Father we thank you and we give you all glory and honor in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah if I didn't, uh, I want to, you know, bring you greetings from our host pastor, Bishop Moses Duku, and his beautiful wife, Reverend Rosina Duku. Right? So we want to jump into episodes number eight. And um, those of you who have been logging on and, and viewing, it's really interesting. It was really a blessing. Um, um, today I'm, I'm, I'm standing alone and we don't have our bishop with us today. But nevertheless, we are getting into the word of God and seeing um, the blessing that God has for us. So episode number eight. And what could that be? Understanding your spiritual status. I'll say that again. Understanding your spiritual status. And I, I, I want to elaborate on it and and really, I'll just say this sentence that probably could highlight it. We are actually going to look at the different types of man, not men, but man, the different types of man, and in relationship to God, right? In relationship to God. So their spiritual status with respect to their relationship with God. And so today, we are going to be discussing three types three types of spiritual status of man with respect to god and i think this is very critical very important for all believers to know and to understand because when we understand these levels of spiritual relationship with god we will understand where we ought to transition to or where we exist in and hopefully transition from one point 
to another. The, the, the title of this series is Growing from Strength to Strength. And I do think that this is very uh, integral. This is very important in our growing, understanding our status, and not just understanding, but being able to shift from one point to the other. So let's get started. Number one, right? Um, with respect to our spiritual status, and that is the natural man. The natural man. And there's a particular portion uh, of scripture I will read um, that will highlight um, these um, classes of man that we want to look at. I want to talk about, and, and this is a Bible study session, and so I want you to please get your notepad get your pen and take these notes down and those of you who have been with us uh, for these past couple months i hope that you would have been doing that so that you can regularly go back to these notes and you know pay attention to it put some of these things into practice to build yourself so we'll be reading from first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 and um from verses 9 straight on to chapter 3 around verse 4 verses 5 around there. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and um, the majority of chapter 2 and to the first part of chapter 3 is where we're going to take this teaching from. Right? So what are the classifications of man? Number one, the natural man. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 14. It goes like this. But the natural man receiveth not the things of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, in other words, and in a simplistic way of understanding, a natural man refers to someone who is unchanged spiritually. And the term we would like to use, they have not been regenerated. They have not experienced a new life in Christ. So someone who has not encountered God and experienced a change of heart, which leads to a change of everything, that person is considered a natural man. A natural man. So I hope that you uh, understand that terminology. I hope that you would understand what I refer to from now on when I say the natural man. Uh, that's a man who doesn't know God, a man who doesn't have the knowledge of God. And apart from, and I'm not talking about uh, just knowing about God. You know, we, we know that. Many Christians speak about that. Knowing about God. And knowing God is two different things. A natural man may know about God, but a, 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 a man who is not natural, and I'll come to those later on, knows um, knows God. That's, that's a difference. So the natural man doesn't know God. He may know about God. He may come about with many theological explanations for who God is, but he only comes to a knowledge of who God truly is when he, when he encounters God. So the natural man does know God, right? And it is not, he's not to be blamed for his state. The natural man is not his fault. Uh, he is not blamed, but identifying who the natural man is, it gives us his limits. It tells us about his limits. And that limit is actually a big one. Because the natural man cannot understand spiritual things, things that are of God. That's a big limit. That's a big downfall in one's life if they were to exist as a natural man. In other words, man without God. That, that's a simple way I could put it for you. Natural man, man without God. And therefore, man without God cannot understand things that are concerning God. It, it, it's... I hope that made sense to you. Man without God cannot understand things that are godly minded, godly centered about God. So, um, in our growing from strength to strength, many of us would have um, 
come out of that situation of not knowing God. And we have to be very grateful. We have to be very thankful because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and he made it possible for us to be a man uh, that no longer exists in the natural realm or the natural phase. So we are no longer existing as natural men, right? Because we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So it's, it's really a, um, it's really a, a beautiful um, work of Jesus Christ to transform us from the natural man into something else. And so we are really, really grateful for that. But I want to identify some dangers understanding our spiritual status and the three types of men. Um, one, the natural man. I want to identify some dangers that we have to pay attention to or may not be dangers, but some facts, right? Number one, the natural man will not understand spiritual things, right? I know I've said it already, but let's expound on it and let's know, let's, let's look at what that actually means. It means that the natural man cannot discern spiritual things. So if you are a believer, you cannot go to a man who does know God to get spiritual advice. Now, am I saying do not go to somebody who is not a believer or a Christian for advice? No. I am saying you cannot get spiritual advice from somebody who doesn't know God. I um, I am not, um, I'll give you an example. I'm not a doctor, right? And I laugh at my wife many times because she would come to me and she would say, um, so what I should do about this and what I should do about that. And then I say, babe, I'm not a doctor. I, and she would say, hey, but you're a science teacher. I, and that has, a, I say, that, that's good. You could observe that I teach science. It doesn't mean I know anything about um, medicine, right? I, I'm not qualified as a doctor. I don't know why your head is hurting, you know? I, I, I don't know if you have any husbands. Listen, I know this is Bible study. We, we could enjoy ourselves. I miss you all very much. I miss the fact that those, from, those of you are from our local church. We cannot gather together physically. Um, I really miss hugging and shaking your hands. And, but, you know, we, we could enjoy ourselves here. And um, so <laughs> I don't know how many of your husbands have this problem where your wife seems to, probably it's me, I don't know. I am blessed with that, um, that situation. But um, I'm always to give an answer. Why is the foot hurting or why this shit happen? You know, and, um, you know, I, we, I can't give the answer because I am not qualified. So if, um, I'll give you another example. I love cars. I, I love to see cars. But I'm not one of those cars enthusiasts, right? Who can say the type of car, state the shade of the vehicle, say the model of the engine. I just like cars. I, I, I will see a car passing by and say, that's a nice car. I don't know what model i don't know what make but i i know what my eyes like so if you were to come to me and ask me to fix your car i might go to the kitchen and pull out a spoon i hope you're understanding the examples i'm giving i'm not qualified to fix your vehicle i'm not qualified to give you advice medically i i can't but guess what? If you ask me to explain to you how uh, the bonding works between sodium and chloride, now, now I can talk to you. Now I can explain to you uh, because of the electrostatic attraction, um, I can explain to you how the bonding works. Why? But because I am equipped to speak on that level. And so I hope you would have understand the series of examples that I said. A man who is not in connection with God, a man who is existing in the natural realm, cannot assist you with spiritual problems. 
spiritual situation. It's a reality of life. Uh, and I, I plug in this here to let you know how dangerous it is for a believer to, to think that they can go to unsaved or unchristian or ungodly persons, whether it be a family member, whether it be a good friend, whether it be a good co-worker, whatever the nature uh, of the relationship you cannot get spiritual advice from somebody who is not spiritual. It's, it's simple like that, right? And um, so I, I really just wanted to plug that in to let you know as a believer, as you go from strength to strength, you need to, um, and this is another episode that I want to talk about, but I'll inject it here. As a believer, you must always associate or find yourself in company who, uh, with someone who is more mature than you. I, 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 there's much I would like to talk about that, but I'll just inject that there. Always find yourself with someone who is more mature than you, more experienced than you, so that they will be able to deposit into your life. So I want to I wanna make this statement. Be a sponge. If you're a young believer, be a sponge. Be a sponge. Soak in everything that you can when you spend time with spiritually mature people. When they speak, sometimes, you know, we, we, those of you young people, if you're young like me and you like to talk and laugh and so on, I want to encourage you. There are some times you need to stay still, stay quiet, observe absorb take in not all the time we need to speak sometimes we need to be still and silent and when we have uh, surrounded by mature spiritual people it's a beautiful and listen I, I really i really want to say this for young believers because sometimes we think that the older folks do not have much to offer right but when you are among older mature people Take that opportunity to soak in their experience. And, and, and you will find that, that there will be a, a great leap in your spiritual status by associating yourself with people like that. I want to interject another point of view for um, that level, the natural man. Many believers become so self-righteous, so, so carried away, so high-minded that we are very quick to condemn people. And there are some people who don't know God and, and, and they, because they exist in the natural realm, they represent the number one, the natural man. And, and sometimes we condemn them. And we say, look at that person. They are really, oh my goodness, they're going to hell. Yes, they're going to hell. But your job is to tell them about Jesus. Your job is to tell them that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. But you know a better way. A way that will lead them to heaven. And we ought not to find ourselves condemning the unbeliever, but true love and genuine concern for them, show them that there is a better way. Because uh, they are natural. They don't understand spiritual things. They do not appreciate the value of the Bible and of God and of love. They don't because they exist in the natural realm. And we ought not to condemn them for their limits. But we ought to give them an opportunity to change. That's why Jesus came. He came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So he came with the intention to assist man, to move us from that natural man phase and spiritual status to something else. And so I hope that would... Um, motivate you and encourage you and allow us all to appreciate um, the importance of, of that right and um, I you know I, I wrote this down a man who is an uneducated sorry a man who is educated yet unsafe may be religious he may be attentive 
but the true gospel may be foreign to him. And that's where the work of the Holy Spirit comes in. Um, we can preach the gospel, we can tell people about Jesus, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit that bring uh, men to the Father. So I want to encourage, while we might have beautiful programs in church, while we might look for new means of technology and, and ways of engaging the youths. And if you are a leader today, I want to, I want to um, if you're uh, from a visiting church and you are looking at methods of engaging the young people and engaging others, I'm not saying it is wrong. It is necessary. We live in a different time. We, may, we have different means. 2,000 years ago, guess what? They didn't have the social media where you could stay at home and join in in a Bible study like this. And, and, and some way you can input and uh, uh, you input into my life, I input into yours through the safety means of technology. But there is no replacement for the Holy Spirit. Absolutely not. There's nothing that you can do to save someone. You can present the gospel, but the saving is the work of the Holy Spirit. And so you must always, in your intention to spread the gospel, you, you, we must always depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, and to touch someone. Right? And that's John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. So, number two, the carnal man. Number two, the carnal man. The carnal man is considered a babe in Christ. Right? The carnal man is considered a babe in in Christ and generally struggles with walking in the flesh rather than in the spirit. So let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verses 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you or unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verses 2. I have fed you with milk and not with Meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Verse 3 For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So here Paul was talking to the Corinthian church and identifying a major flaw in their character. And that was that many of them were carnal Christians. Now, I just want to start by saying this. Do not worry if you are a carnal Christian. And I'll, I want to explain myself so you don't take me to task. Do not worry if you are a carnal Christian because truly it is the start to every journey for the believer. I hope you understand that. It is the start of the journey for every believer. You must start somewhere. And when you transition, we are talking about spiritual status. When you transition from the natural man who doesn't know God to the man who has now met God, that's a big transition. There's a big change, but it's not instantaneous. You don't become instantly holy and righteous in your ways perfectly, right? You are holy and righteous because of the work of Jesus Christ in your life. But you as an individual might be struggling with issues. You may be struggling with, with you might still be struggling with certain sin issues in your life, right? But that's the carnal man. And it's, it's, that's the beginning of the journey as a believer. What's the danger? What's the danger? So I notice I said it's, it's not a worrying thing if you are in the carnal phase. What's the danger is staying in the carnal man phase. 
So when you start in your spiritual journey, you, you are in the carnal phase. You are, as you are growing, you're working towards becoming more spiritual. So that's fine. That's okay. But staying in that position is very, very detrimental. You know, um, Paul, Paul said to the church, um, how long will I feed you with milk? And let, let's look at the reality of that. If I and, and if we really absorb this example and understand it, it will be mind blowing to our spiritual status. Those of you who are parents who had who have children, um, if you uh, and young people, uh, uh, if when you get older and you get married and you have children and God spare life and that can happen, th this would be worrying to you. If you have a baby. And after one year, you feed the baby milk, two years, and so on. And then five years goes by, and that, that baby hasn't changed in size. That baby is still crying for milk and, and, and using the diaper, the pampers, and, and you have to still uh, do everything as a newborn baby. And then 10 years after, you are still doing the same baby uh, infant treatment, at age 15, now you're going to be worried. I, I mean, as a matter of fact, from the age 5, you would be worried. You didn't have to cross. Uh, uh, some of you at age 2, you will be worried because you want that baby to start speaking and writing the alphabet. And some of you expect miracles. From uh, uh, <laughs> Some of us probably didn't read and write till we were 10 years. Uh, and But now in technology, we want our babies to read and write at 2. And, you know... All these fancy things. And, you know, nothing is wrong with that. But, but um, you would be worried. After five years, after 10 years, after 15 years, you have a baby on your hand still. Don't you think that is dangerous and worrying for us as believers? After five years, 10 years, 15 years in the faith, you are still considered a baby. Paul said, I can't feed you with meat and, 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 you know, um, people who are in the carnal phase, oh, it's, it's really challenging because they're offended for everything. Um, if, if, if the brother didn't call their name, they're offended. If the sister um, made a mistake by, you know, um, you know, saying something while they were singing and they felt that it... it, it, it um, uh, referred to them and, and they knew something about their situation, they, they are offended. If the pastor forgot to call you for the week, they become offended. If somebody didn't message on the group chat, we have group chats now, if somebody didn't message and ask them how they were going, they are offended. If, um, you know, if the pastor, and this might touch a sore point for some, some people, if the pastor preach about offering, you're offended. You want to leave the church. If the pastor preach about living right and nakedness, you're offended. You know, that's the life of a baby. That's the life of a carnal mind. And, and it, was, it was even so, um, it, it was even such a point that Paul said this. He said, among you, you have envy, you have strife, you have divisions. It's so sad that 2,000 years ago that Paul had that issue with the Corinthian church. We still have that issue in the world today in our churches where there are divisions, there are cliques. And it's, it's, it's impossible to fathom, but, but there are people who, um, I don't know, they, they exist in that carnal phase. And, and to me, I want to encourage you, brethren, as I said, there's nothing wrong existing in that phase for some time but we must graduate it's it's like our, sp our spiritual status is growth and that's why the theme of our episodes and uh, uh, what we are doing is growing from strength to strength so we have grown from being a natural man without the knowledge of God to being a carnal man having the knowledge of God being transformed and introduced to God and now hopefully looking for change so as um, it, it, it really is um, a, a sore point for many churches 
when believers remain in the carnal phase. And those of you who are looking on today, I don't want you to be offended. I want you to face the reality of truth. Are you in that carnal phase? Are you a babe in Christ? That's okay. But have you been in the babe in Christ phase for years? And if that's the case, today I want to tell you, you need to change. You need to grow. You need to graduate. You need to eat meat. You need to be solid. You know, uh, um, even in these times, and I want, to, I want to interject this slowly just to give you some real substance of the danger of being in this. Yeah? You will find a lot of people uh, who are very quick to criticize the church. I'm talking about believers. I'm not talking about persons who are not Christians and non-believers. I'm talking about believers. You will find them, they have a problem with the pastor, they have a problem with the worship team, they have a problem with the presidents, the men presidents, the men leader, the woman leader, uh, the woman president, the, the youth leader, the Sunday school leaders, the usher department, the, their problems all around, problems. Uh, why? Because they exist in the carnal phase. And, and the only way you can overcome these obstacles is not by changing others, but by changing us. We as an individual, us, I'm, point, I'm using me as an example, we need to change. We need to grow. It's hurtful to hear believers um, even, even going so far to say about the spiritual status of churches. I will touch on that point. I'll not elaborate too much, but I'll just share this with you. Believers, you don't have the spiritual authority. Um, and neither the position to talk about the spiritual status of a church. The only person who is qualified to um, address and point out and deal with the spiritual status of a church is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And guess what? And that will be dealt with on Judgment Day. Those who are in other in uh, in our sense, we say that this church is spiritually dead, brethren. I want to warn you: you don't have the spiritual authority to say that. Neither do I. Nobody, but the Lord Jesus Christ. And on Judgment Day, He will sort that out. And it's 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 important to note that many people or the persons who actually speak like that are the ones who are either in the natural phase, who don't know God, who don't even have a, a, a clue about God, or those persons who are in the carnal phase. And that's very dangerous, brethren. I, wonder, I want to employ you today. If you are looking at this and you are, you are visiting a person, you are not from our local church or wherever, or you are from our local church and you have found yourself in that conversation, I want to let you know, brethren, please refrain from that. What we ought to do, rather than criticize individuals, we ought to pray for them. That's when someone mo moves from the carnal phase into the other man that we'll speak about. And, and that's important. Today, we don't need people to pull down the kingdom of God. We don't, know, we don't need people to criticize the church. People who are in the church to criticize. We don't need that. God doesn't need that in his kingdom. He needs prayer, warrior, prayer warriors. He needs people who are ready for battle. He needs people who would want to take up the challenge and preach the gospel. He needs people who wants to assist in kingdom building business and not tearing down the kingdom it's very very important even jesus said he said um, if i am of the devil would the devil when they accused him that he was um, he cast out devils in the name of belzebub he said would would i i go against the devil and tear down the works of the devil if i am with the devil it doesn't operate like that and so I want to encourage you, brethren, we have an excellent opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that Jesus saves. He changes lives. He can bring life. He can give power and authority over death and sin and hell. And we need to spread the gospel. We cannot do it in disunity. We cannot do it in chaos. We cannot do it uh, in division and strife. 
We need to do it in unity and purpose and in understanding who God is. And I just want to leave the third one with you today. The spiritual man. The spiritual man. So number one, natural. Number two, carnal. And thirdly, the spiritual man. The spiritual man is the man who knows God and is no longer a babe in Christ, but he now is, is transitioning from the carnal into the spiritual. And that's why Paul would have said many times in Galatians, we do not, uh, to, not to walk in the flesh because you will fulfill the desires of the flesh, but to walk in the spirit. And so this is where you as a believer, when we are growing from strength to strength, that is the level that we want to attain. And it doesn't stop. You keep growing. But the level that we want to attain is the spiritual man. That's the third type of man we want to reach. The spiritual man. The man who knows the things of God. And how does he know the things of God? Not because he is special. Not because he is unique. Not because he is more righteous and holy than somebody else. And, and that's a point to make sure and understand. It doesn't mean that a spiritual man is better than somebody else. This is not what the kingdom of God is. This isn't a comparison and a competition. The spiritual man only emphasizes or highlights your relationship with God. When your relationship with God becomes strong and solid and secure, you are now transitioning from the carnal into the spiritual. And what you will find is what Paul addressed the church with strife and bitterness and confusion. You no longer be part of that. So you, don't, you no longer be part of the problem. You become a solution to the problem. You no longer become a babe, but you become an adult that can assist others in the other phases of life. And so I really think that if you want, if we all want, I, I, I desire it, if we want a better church, and I know that right now many people are criticizing churches, churches ought to do better. Churches, well, you know what? A church is not made up of any individual person but it is made up of a collection of persons that make up the body of Christ and it, it, the sole responsibility of the effectiveness of a church is not on one person and if you want to see a spiritual revival in your church we need a spiritual revival in us if you want the church to be effective, then you and I as an individual ought to be effective in Christ. So brethren, I hope that you were motivated and blessed. I could go more and on, but I don't want to, you know, cross a certain time. We are just trying to make sure that you get enough that you, you know, um, you're not spending too much time on the screen, but that you were blessed and ministered. The spiritual man is where we want to go to. So in summary today, we have the natural man, the man who doesn't know God. Number two, the carnal man, the man who is a babe in Christ. And that's, all, that's okay. That's the stage we must all start at. But number three is where we want to end off the spiritual man. And so brethren, um, you know, God uh, gave me this thought a couple months ago and that I, I hold dear to now. And, he say, and it, it came to me that we, um, in, we cannot solve spiritual problems with physical methods. We cannot solve spiritual problems by physical methods or means. Spiritual problems require spiritual solutions. And brethren, for us to grow from strength to strength, we truly need to transition from the carnal man into the spiritual man, where there can be a true um, overhauling of our insides and allow the Holy Spirit to take control and to guide us. So brethren, I hope that you were blessed this evening. I hope that I gave you enough information to understand the spiritual status of our lives, the three types of men that exist or man that exists in terms of relationship with God and we ought to be able to transition
from one point to the other. Right? So God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Love you all very much. Um, and I just want to end with prayer um, uh, to encourage you. I just also want to take this point, take this time, sorry, to, you know, encourage all those who are listening. I want to say thank you for tuning in. But I want to just leave this with you, that you are special, you are unique, you are loved by God. We are faced with challenges today. Many people are losing their lives with this COVID virus. Many people are losing their jobs. Many people are in some deep, serious financial situations. And, and we have, many people are frustrated and they don't know what to do. I want to put it to you today that Jesus Christ is the answer and he has always been the answer and he will always continue to be the answer today. I want to let you know, have faith in God. Have faith in a God who died for you because he loves you and by his stripes you are healed. I want to, I want to encourage you and let you know, depend on Jesus. He truly is the answer for the world today. When in these days we can say perilous times are upon us, we know that we have a hope and a faith in Jesus Christ because he is more than able to keep us. His grace is sufficient for thee. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you today. We give you all the glory and the honor and praise. I thank you this afternoon for all those who have been logged on and watching. I pray a special blessing upon their life. I hope you will touch, you will minister. I hope that their lives will be, oh God, they will be motivated to, to know you, to grow and to become that spiritual man, to reach that status where the, the relationship with you has truly changed and increased. Father, I thank you. All of us today, we want to be spiritual. We want to be more like you. May you have mercy on us, O oh God. And where we have failed, where we have fallen short, God, wash us in your blood. Purify our thinking and help us to transition, O oh God, from that carnal nature into a spiritual one. Father, I thank you today. Lord, remember in a special way those who have lost their loved ones, O oh God whether it be from coronavirus, Lord, or any other means. Losing a loved one isn't easy. But Father, I pray that you would bring hope. I pray that you would bring life. I pray that you would bring strength. I pray, oh God, Jesus, that you will help them. You would give them the strength to go through this period, this time, oh God. And may you allow healing of the heart to occur. Father, we thank you today. Lord, I, I notice, oh God, even on Facebook, there's a lot of young girls that have gone missing. I don't know if anyone is paying attention to this, Lord. But if there's some criminal element or demonic activity that has been happening this week, oh God, to cause uh, young people to lose their lives, uh, I am praying, God, that you break that satanic hole uh, and every child, oh God, who comes from a Bible-believing home, they will be covered by the blood of Jesus. All of our brothers and sisters, they will be covered. Their homes will be covered, oh God, because you said, oh, your name is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and a saver. Lord Jesus, touch us today. Keep us, oh God, in your arms, Lord Jesus. Whatever is happening, oh God, preserve our people and keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, thank you for taking the time. I hope I wasn't too long, but I thank you for taking the time to be with us and joining with us. I hope that you were blessed. I just want to encourage you to continue praying, continue living for the Lord, continue um, you know, surrendering your life to Him and allowing Him to lead you. If it's the first time you're with us today, please, if you think this video would help somebody, please like it on Facebook or share it. If you're on YouTube, please send the link to somebody and encourage them. I ask them to click the subscribe button so every time we send a video, um, it will be uploaded to their phone or their laptop and it will be easy for them to see it. So God bless you. Love you, brethren. Those of you who are not a reproach New Testament Church of God, we love you all very much. We miss you. We hope that we'll see you all soon when this is over. 
Love you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.